A-level interpretation questions can be quite tricky. So I'm purposely making this into a video so that you can watch it back and stop it and pause it and watch it again so that you can understand these instructions because this is a key part of your exam that you need to understand. First of all, let's take the helicopter view of the whole Russian history exam. So the Russian history exam is 40% of your overall grade. It's a two and a half hour paper. And in that two and a half hour paper, you are going to do three things. You're going to do one interpretation question. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. And two essay questions. Now, the essay questions are the sort of thing that we've been doing throughout this course. And you have to do two of them out of a choice of three. And each of those essay questions are 25 marks and 45 minutes long. So the two essay questions are an hour and a half. That leaves an hour, though, of the whole paper on the interpretation questions. And that's something we've not touched a lot on in this course yet. The interpretation question, unlike the essay question, is compulsory. So you get no choice. You will be given an interpretation question on a set focus with three extracts. It's going to be 30 minute marks and it's going to be an hour long that you're going to write for. So this is how it works. If I was sitting that Russian history exam, I would do my interpretation question first in an hour, then I do an essay question, then I do a second essay question. That would be my two and a half hours. But this video is really going to focus in on the interpretation question. So let's dive into those. Now, the interpretation question is going to look like this. So when you open up that exam booklet in the summer, it will look exactly like this. Three extracts. Each of those extracts is very roughly about 15 lines and one single question about all three. So the extracts are always going to be on a similar focus. This question that you can see here is about the impact of Stalinism on people's lives in Russia by 1941. Questions in the past have asked questions about the reign of Nicholas II, the reign of Alexander II. They've asked questions about Stalin's economy, but all three of those extracts have been on the exact same focus. And it's compulsory, so you've got to know the whole course. Now, the question on those three extracts is always worded the exact same apart from the end. So the question is always worded using your understanding of the historical context. Assess how convincing the, ar the arguments in these three extracts are in relation to. And then the last bit's different every single time. But let's unpack this question a little bit more to understand it. So firstly, when it's saying historical context, what it's really meaning is using your historical knowledge. When we're talking about convincing, we're really saying making a judgment about how these historians are right or wrong. Please note here it's saying arguments. And we'll come back to that in a minute because actually what you'll notice is these extracts make multiple arguments. And it's asking you to analyse how convincing each one of those arguments are. And the last bit and the most important bit is the focus of the question. So I'll say this to students every year and I'll say it to you guys. As soon as you walk in there and you get to this question, you grab your highlighter and you highlight everything after in relation to so that you're really, really focusing on that specific focus. So let's talk about the structure of this interpretation question, because it is odd. And the structure of this question genuinely is a bit weird. So I said you've got an hour to do this, pay, this question and it's 30 marks. But actually, in reality, the best way of thinking about it is it's three short essays. A short essay on how convincing extract A is, a short essay on how convincing extract B is, and a short essay on how convincing extract C is. Each one of those short essays is going to be 20 minutes. Each one of them is going to be about a page and a half-ish. And I mean it, What's weird about this is you get zero marks for comparison. So even though there's three extracts there, nowhere should you be writing extract A is better than B, or C is the best of them all, or C is the weakest of them all. No one gives you any marks for comparison. 
you need to basically see this as three mini essays in one question. And that's the best way of seeing it. So, all right, we've understood the overall big structure of this. What do we do in each one of these mini essays? Well, each one of the mini essays is relatively simple. In that, you need an intro, two paragraphs and a conclusion. So in the introduction, you're going to state the main point of that extract and how much you think it's convincing. You're going to do a paragraph on how it's convincing, a paragraph on how it's limited, and then a, and then a very short conclusion saying overall how much you think it is convincing or not. You do that three times. Once for extract A, once for extract B, and once for extract C. Now I'm going to talk you through the steps of how you would end up getting here. Because remember, if you've got 20 minutes on extract A, 20 minutes on extract B, 20 minutes on extract C, I'm actually recommending to you that you spend five minutes planning and thinking, 15 minutes writing, five minutes reading and planning, 15 minutes writing, five minutes reading and planning, 15 minutes writing. And that'll really take you that full hour and that'll help you out. So let's look at what I'm going to tell you or advise you to do. So first off, when you go into that exam, I want you to have different coloured highlighters. And when you read through each extract, I want you to read it twice. The first thing you're going to do is you're just going to read it blank. You're going to read it without any annotations, without any highlighting. You're just going to read it. So this example here, I'm not going to read it out. It's from a historian called Ponomaryov. And this extract is all about Stalin's first five year plan. Now, when I'm reading this, what I'm looking for are the big arguments that this extract is making. And in this example, I think there are three main arguments I can pull out that Ponomaryov is trying to make. The, word, the first argument is just the first line. So I'm going to highlight that in blue. And in this first bit, that's what that's Ponomaryov's first argument. Now, Ponomaryov's second argument is actually quite a lot longer and is the bulk of this extract. And that's the bit in pink. But then I think Ponomaryov makes a third, third, a third argument at the end. So the second time I'm reading it, what I'm doing is trying to think about what arguments is this historian making? And when I mean arguments, I don't mean fact. I mean big statementy things. Now, the second thing I'm going to do within step one is summarise those main arguments. So I've done my highlighting. Great. Now what I'm going to do in the left hand column is try and summarise what he's saying. So actually, in this first argument, what Panomaryov is saying is, the first five-year plan was saying new. Industrialization astonished people. That's my summary. The second bit, that pink bit, my summary is that Ponomaryov's arguing that it took huge work of sacrifice and deprivation. The third argument, I'm going to argue here, that I think Ponomaryov is arguing that the first five-year plan was really successful. So that first step, all I'm doing is thinking about what are Ponomaryov's arguments. Remember, I've got five minutes to do this reading and planning. You'll have loads of time to do it. The second step is to list any evidence that supports or could challenge this expert. So, you know this. I've done it. On the left-hand side, I've summarised my arguments. On the right-hand side, I'm going to think about what evidence have I got that I might be able to use to support or challenge those arguments. So let's do that together. In this first extract, sorry, in this first argument that Ponomario argues, he's arguing that the first five-year plan was saying new and it was astonishing. Well, the best evidence to prove that is the fact that the Bolsheviks built the White Sea Canal and the Dnieper Dam. In this second argument, he says that it took huge work of sacrifice and deprivation. Well, definitely, I've got some really great evidence about the St Stakhanovite movement. That's going to help me out here. His third argument is that the first five year plan was really successful. Now, there's lots of evidence about heavy industry I could use to support here, but I could really easily challenge that argument by saying there was hardly any light industry. So I don't think we can really call it a success. I've done my planning, I've done my thinking. Now let's go back to the structure that I said for each essay. So I said you've got to have an intro, a paragraph about supporting, paragraph about limitations and overall how convincing it was. Let's look at what that might look like based on that planning and thinking we've just done. 
So in this art example, in this say in my intro, Ponomaryov is extremely positive about the success of the first five-year plan. In this, he's convincing to a large extent. That's as short as my introduction needs to be. I've only got 15 minutes to write. I can't write loads. My first paragraph, I've only given you a little sample for what the start of it might look like. It would need to be a lot longer than this, but this is the sort of thing you might want to write. Ponomaryov's first argument is that the first five-year plan signified a higher stage of planning, emphasising how astonishing this was. In this, he's convincing when we consider the large infrastructure that was built at the time, like the White Sea Canal. So again, I'm tying everything back to convincing. I'm using mini quotes from the extract itself, and I've got specific evidence. In my paragraph about limitations, I could say, however, Ponomaryov's argument is not totally convincing. He states that the USSR had been converted into an industrial country. This was true if we consider heavy industry. However, if you also consider light industry, this argument is severely limited. Russia had very little light industry. And I'd go on and I'd talk about that for a bit. And then overall, I'd pop in my conclusion. And again, it wouldn't need to be much longer than this, maybe two or three more lines. In conclusion, despite the few limitations, this is overall an extremely convincing argument. Now, what I've hoped to do in this video is just give you a flavour for the sort of steps you need to go through when you do each of these extracts. We're going to do a lot of these in class, but I wanted to give you that overview so you know where this is going. I mean it. I want you to come back to this and watch it again and again and again. Thanks.